Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for tuning in. You know, I've always said that becoming a professional in business is much like playing sports. You have your high school players, you got the college level players, and then you got the pros. And one thing you'll see about people in the pros is they have one defining thing in common, in that they don't let pain or discomfort stop them from becoming successful. And you know, in our journey to becoming su successful, whether it be in business or in life, we're going to experience times where we get knocked down. We're going to experience severe pain and discomfort. We're going to be discouraged. And the unfortunate thing is, many people give up five minutes before the miracle happens. Well, tonight on our show, we're going to talk to somebody that didn't give up and went on to have an amazing career. We're going to talk to restaurateur extraordinaire and actually Miami Dolphins legend, Bob Baumhauer, is on the show. <laughs> Alabama Hall of Famer. We're also going to have our dear friend, real estate guru, Amy Norris, is going to stop by, tell us what's happening. And also, Miss Margot Bush will be co-hosting with us. Uh, stay tuned. We have an amazing show. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome back. I'm here with the lovely Margot Bush. Margot, how are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing great. I, I'm glad that you decided to come back, co-host with us. Thank you. I and, and we saw it. each other a few days ago, as yeah. a matter of fact. Uh, there was a business seminar uh, oh, kind wow. of in our backyard. And wow. uh, a lot of, it was a great time because a lot of friends I hadn't seen for a few years happened to be coming through town. Yeah, I think it's been, uh, gosh, probably two or three, maybe three, four years <clears throat> since we've yeah. seen Brian Tracy mm -hmm. and uh, Bob Harrison and Les Brown. And of course, uh, I think Les Brown, he just laughs and makes everybody happy. Cracks up. And uh, so I love him because, well, you know my story a little bit because uh, there was something that Les Brown wrote in his book that really just resonated with me after Bill passed away um, was he said, sometimes you've got to lay down your burden in order to follow your dream. And it was a time in my life where I really had to make some decisions about, you know, where I was supposed to go right. because I was married when I was 19 and uh, I didn't know what to do. Right. And uh, I met you and, uh, and I met Les Brown. Yeah. <laughs> so... Yeah, it well, he's good. he's an amazing guy, and I didn't know Bob Harrison much. I know he's kind of like a Dave Ramsey. Now I know him real well, because, but I know you guys. Yeah, because he um, actually was on the board of uh, a college that my husband right. uh, taught in. We have uh, Amy Norris, uh, real estate guru, is uh, going to tell us what's kind of going on in the market right. for for buyers and sellers. So let's right. bring her out now, uh, Miss Amy Norris. Great to see you again, Amy. Hi. How are you? Sure. I'm great. How about you? I am doing super fantastic. That's what we used to say back in the day in business. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we were always told like, no matter how, what kind of a day you're having, you're either doing super fantastic, or if it's a really terrible day, you're doing unbelievable. Unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> either way, it sounds very positive. But um, yeah. now I know you're out there. You're a real mover and shaker. You are out there with your pulse on what's happening in real estate. And I know that you're not only number one in the state of Alabama, but number one for northern Georgia, northern Florida. You are That's really right. out there. You know what's happening. What's going on in the, in the, in the real estate market? Let's say for, uh, uh, I, obviously, it's been a, a buyer's market. But what's happening with, with it buyers? It has, actually. It's very interesting because inventory is really starting to shrink. There are still some foreclosures and short sales out there, but the inventory is drying up. So if you're a buyer on the fence, now is the time to get off, especially with the um, rates being so low. Right. It's really time to take advantage, and if you want to buy, buy. Um, also, too, a lot of people have thought about, well, is it worth building? And, you know, for a long time, prices were so low that, like, nobody was building. Right. And lots were vacant, and they would sit on the micro for market forever. But now we're seeing people actually buying lots. Stuff is getting snapped up. And so if you don't know and if you've ever been interested in building, um, the normal track builders like your Adams and your um, DR Hortons and Paracel Homes, Benchmarks, those type of uh, construction companies, they're usually selling at about $88 a square foot. Of course, that's subject to change, and it depends on location and all that. Right. But $88 a square, square foot. And then if you have a custom home builder, let's say you want to buy, build a nice beach house for investment, it typically can cost anywhere from 
90 to 130 dollars a square foot. Now I'm sure for sellers uh, it's good news. Things it are... is, yeah, because if they ever wanted to upgrade or you know if they're wondering like, oh, is my property ever going to sell? Yes, it is. You know, if you have a good agent and it's priced in line with the market, it will sell. Yeah, things are moving. Yes. Well, speaking of good agents, how can people get a hold of you, Amy, for more information or if they want to? Yep, um, it's amynorristeam.com or amysellsthebeach.com. Amy Sells the Beach, thank you so much for coming thank by, you. Amy. And we'll be right back with uh, Bob Baumhauer. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> thank you. Our guest tonight is not only a football legend, but very successful entrepreneur. Uh, in the restaurant business. Uh, please give me a w big hand to welcome Mr. Bob Baumhauer. Hello, Ms. Margo. Good to see you. Thank you. Hello, oh. Dan. How are you? Great to see you. Good, good to see you. Thanks for having me. I'll tell you, shaking your hand is like a pig grizzly bear. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're a big man, and uh, I don't have to look up often, but man alive. Now, obviously, Bob, uh, many people know you as uh, a legend with the Miami Dolphins. The time that you played with the, with the Dolphins was, I mean, really legendary. Um, but before that, you were actually two-time uh, All-American in college. Tell us a little bit about what it was like playing for uh, Coach uh, Bear Bryant at that time. Well, for me, like a lot of guys, it was a life-changing experience. Uh, I'm actually a rehabilitated quitter. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, when I went to Alabama, I had moved to uh, Alabama from Florida as a senior in high school. Did not have a, any kind of a drive to be a great football player or anything like that, but uh, was able to get a, a scholarship with Alabama. And through my relationship uh, with Coach Bryant, uh, uh, he kind of what I call turned the light on for me. And uh, I actually quit the beginning of my sophomore year because... Uh, uh, I had all the answers and everybody else was a Thank bunch you. of dummies. Coach Bryant <laughs> kind of woke me up. He cared enough about me to get me in a meeting afterwards. And uh, after that meeting, uh, I had a completely different view right. on everything. And I uh, went on to have a, a very, very uh, rewarding career at Alabama. Yeah. And then obviously went to Miami and played uh, a long time in the pros. Yeah. Uh, I, we had uh, Dr. Galen McCullough on the show, and he had uh, also played with Coach Bear Bryant. He had said that, you know, even throughout his career now as being a doctor, many of the lessons he learned on the field stuck with mm -hmm. him. Really, they were life lessons. Right. Yeah, and, and Coach Bryant was about that first. He was about uh, uh, teaching uh, principles of uh, life and, you know, talked about family and God and uh, being the best that you could be, right. uh, taking care of mom and dad, uh, taking care of your teammates, and... Uh, uh, it always, always, uh, um, uh, back then anyway, it, it, it didn't always resonate with us. But as sure. you got older, and some of those, um, sink in. Some of those things started to sink in, uh, I, I still see it as a gift being able right. to uh, have the uh, relationship I have with Coach Bryant. Sure. Well, and I know that uh, you had this amazing career with Alabama, as we mentioned, two time All American and also inducted uh, in, the, in the Alabama Hall of Fame. Right. And, uh, but then you get drafted uh, by the Miami Dolphins. And uh, what was that like for you in life? I mean, that was, tell us about when you got yeah. the news. Yeah, it was amazing for me because I had moved to Alabama from North Palm Beach, Florida. And uh, I had watched the Dolphins go undefeated in high school when I was in high school. So I'd become a big Dolphin fan. Right. And then I get drafted by Miami. And uh, I got that phone call, and uh, I was going back to Florida, and I was one happy camper. I bet. And be, being able to uh, go from probably the greatest coach ever coached college football to be able to go to, uh, at the time, everybody, you know, talked about Coach Shula as the greatest yeah. football in the pros, football coach in the pros. And still to this day, uh, Coach, the only undefeated team in the history of professional football. Well, even in, in the business world, Shula is just so many entrepreneurs learn by some of his coaching messages because he was such a – so you had the privilege of just really being molded by two, two of the greatest ever. I did, and, uh, you know, Coach, uh, Coach Shula wrote a, a book called The Winning Edge, and uh, a lot of the things in that book were uh, very similar to the things that Coach Bryant taught. And, you know, a lot of folks talk about that uh, success leaves footsteps. It's just a question of whether or not you want to follow in those right. footsteps, footsteps. It's all about the choices that we make. 
And, um, you know, a lot of folks will bring that up to me. He said, you were one lucky guy to play for two great coaches like that. Well, and I, I read, too, that, uh, you know, as you were growing with these coaches, you were also known as a bit of a wild man on the <laughs> field. <Yeah. laughs> Lots of stories. On, yeah. But tell us, at least share one story with us. Uh, I'm sure you have many. Um, I do. Um, I don't know if I can tell them on <laughs> well, the show. Well, we're, we're late uh, night, so yeah. it's fine. <laughs> yeah, I, um, well, I, uh, you know, the thing you were talking about uh, early on, I wrestled a bear one time. And um, I had a lot of fun doing that. Was it for and charity? Because I read it was like a 450-pound bear. And they it was a big bear. bear? And bear? And he's like, oh, was it a real it was, bear? It was a real bear. Yeah. It was a real bear. Where did and, a real bear happen to come by you? It was a, in a boat show in uh, Palm Beach, uh, Florida. My dad put me up to it. Yeah. And um, it was uh, one of those things that uh, it just seemed like the right thing the to right do thing at the to time. Do. <laughs> and uh, the th funny thing about it is that bear knew how to wrestle. And, and I was the seventh guy. I was the last guy to wrestle the bear. He, uh, a bunch of us were, you know, football players and the like. He whooped every one of us. Right? Uh, I can imagine that scene with me would have been something like after a few be beers with my father, my dad said, I dare you to, yeah. I could have, I think I could take that bear. But I would have wound up dead and never got out of the situation. Yeah, you know, I, I heard you talking about Zig Ziglar earlier. Yeah. And my, my dad knew Zig pretty well. Oh, is that right? My dad was in the vacuum cleaner sales oh, business. So Zig Ziglar was big in direct sales. Direct sales. Yes, big absolutely. Time. And uh, he was always the kind of guy who uh, was about accepting challenges. So That's right. it was all about a challenge there. Wow, wow. Well, I know <laughs> that you were uh, an all pro uh, nose tackle, probably the most brutal physical uh, position that you possibly could play. What was that like being in the trenches at that time uh, on Miami? Uh, well, uh, you know, when I, I went to Miami, I'd never played nose before. And, and at Alabama, I was a defensive end. And um, uh, the timing, I guess, uh, the, the, the situation that Miami was in, they were in a rebuilding year, my rookie year. And a lot of, a lot of young players had been signed and drafted, and uh, they put me in nose. Did not want to be in nose. Most people, most football players don't grow up dreaming about being a nose guard. They, yeah. they, they, they dream about being a quarterback. Uh, you know, the coach, uh, my position coach, uh, talked to me about uh, the opportunity that I had there. He said, you can be a good defensive end, you can be a great nose guard. You got to make the choice. And uh, I didn't want to play in the middle, but I did. And um, within probably three or four weeks, I was able to grow to love the position. Wow. Love the challenge, and you're exactly right. Uh, nose guard playing a true three-man line is a very physically and mentally challenge, sure. challenge in that position because of the uh, uh, sometimes sacrifices that you're asked to make at that position. Yeah. But it was uh, it was something I grew to enjoy. I bought in. You know, it was all about uh, making our defense what it could be. Right. And we grew to be the killer bees, number one NF um, number one defense in the NFL. For a couple of years, went to a couple of Super Bowls, so it all yeah. worked out pretty yeah. good. Well, I know too that um, a couple of years ago, I worked with Grant Wistrom from the Rams, and he told me he says, and he wasn't even nose, but he said, you know, I used to hit guys that were a hundred pounds bigger than me, and he's a big guy. I, I tell you though, when you're out on the field, you don't feel it. Yeah. You know, you're so into the game, you're so focused, sure. uh, you're so about the challenge or the the mission that you've got. Uh, uh, you feel it later. Yeah, wake but, up in the but morning. But a lot of times you see those hits in a football game and you're not feeling it. You yeah. get up and you, you, you'll watch them today. I'm, you know, being older, I'll watch and I'll, it's almost like uh, that was another life, another lifetime. And yeah. you wonder how those young guys get up. Well, I'll tell you, uh, I wanna, we're going to take a quick break. I want to talk a little bit about uh, what you're doing now. Obviously, you've kind of transitioned from football to a very successful entrepreneur. But uh, we're going to take a short break. We'll be right back with uh, Bob Baumhauer. Stick with us. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome back. I'm here with the uh, famous, maybe infamous, Bob Baumhauer. Uh, Bob, we were talking about, um, you know, obviously when you get, went to Miami, it was an amazing uh, year. And I know that we were talking a little backstage. You said that uh, there wasn't a big transition for you going into the pros. Actually, your, your rookie year was like just an amazing dream-like uh, year. It was. It was. Uh, I went through a... a a fairly quick transition yeah. in training camp. Uh, like we were talking about earlier, I was playing nose guard, and the offensive line for the Dolphins was uh, the best 
in the NFL at the time, by far. Yeah. And I, I really didn't realize that in training camp, and there were times in training camp where I was starting to feel a little discouraged. You know, I, I was getting pushed around like a, kind of like a pinball. Sure. That's and, it's hard uh, to believe. But. And, yeah, and, and, and I had a hard time dealing with it. Yeah. And uh, as training camp progressed and we started to get into preseason games, right. I started to do a little better, and then all of a sudden I started seeing, okay, wait a minute. These guys I'm practicing against are a whole lot better than the guys I'm playing against. Sure. And uh, it turned out what a benefit. That yeah. they were the best there was. Uh, Hall of Fame guys. Yeah, right. Jim Langer, Larry Little, Bob Kuchenberg, some of the best to ever play the game. And so by the time we get into regular season, um, I'm having a good time. You're ready to go. I'm having a good time in my rookie year. One of my best buddies, A.J. Douay, was a rookie as well uh, from LSU. And uh, we just had a phenomenal year. We went 10-4 and four that year. Uh, Dolphins had gone 6-8, and eight, actually, the year prior. Had five rookies starting on defense. And uh, it was just one of those things that I, uh, I feel very fortunate to been able to experience. Not and only the talent, but right time, right place. Right time, everything. right people. Right. Good people. Uh, Miami had some very, I mean, the coaches were great. Uh, my, my position coach, who I had for almost my entire career, was like a dad. You know, tough that. Sure. But uh, Coach Carey, uh, but that rookie year set uh, uh, set me on my way to have uh, what I would consider, a, you know, almost like a dream being able sure. to be with the Dolphins for all those years. Well, let me ask you too. You know, we read about so many players that get these big contracts, they get into professional sports, but they really aren't grounded or they have this this career you know playing at that level obviously there's a toll physically right and they're not prepared after the game right and you read about these fortunes lost and they don't really invest and I, I know obviously you're you're uh, you have a chain of restaurants they're just fantastic I've eaten at a couple of them actually but what was per playing at that time in the game what were some of the lessons you learned that you could take that kind of prepared you for becoming an entrepreneur well the first thing is to have a vision for yourself, yeah. you know, to be able to uh, get to a destination, you, you've kind of got to have a, a map, you know, you yeah, got to right. know where you're going. So you got to have some kind of a vision. And uh, after that, you got to figure out how you're going to get there. And, um, you know, when I first got into the hospitality business, I was in it for all the wrong reasons and didn't really know where I was going. But uh, as I, you know, after I retired, um, I uh, started learning. It, it, you know, I remember I told somebody that told me I didn't know anything about the restaurant business. I said, you're right, but it's, it's not rocket science. I'll learn it. Yeah. And so and it, today I still learn a lot sure. about the business. My kids te teach me a lot. I got four under 20, and, and I get coached all the time at home right now. I bet. About, yeah, <laughs> about, well, the world's you know, changing what I need so to much, be too. Doing. But, yes. uh, uh, you know, you got to have that vision, then you got to have the discipline, and, uh, you know, like talking about sports. You've got to have the uh, mental toughness to fight through the battles that sometimes may feel may make you feel like quitting. Yeah, you're going to you have know? losses. You're, you're going to have, have defeats. some setbacks, and and things aren't always going to go your way. And you just got to have faith that if you keep pushing one step at a time, one foot at a time, that you'll get through it. Now, originally, I know you were invited into the restaurant. Uh, you kind of had a, your first venture. You were Joe Willie that. Namath. Yeah. Yeah, Joe Namath and, uh, Willie. You know, Joe was an Alabama <laughs> guy, and Joe and a guy named Richard Todd, who actually had a a, a, a place down here in Orange okay. Beach, and uh, he uh, 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 was uh, my best buddy at the time. We all got into the business after Joe retired in Fort Lauderdale, mm -hmm. and then I got into the uh, wing business uh, through the invitation of a teammate of mine to go have lunch at a place called Wings and Things where they serve chicken wings. And I thought it was crazy. You want me to go someplace and eat chicken wings for lunch? Right. I had no idea, <laughs> you know, that they were buffalo wings. And right. I went and I was introduced to buffalo wings. And that really got me hooked. And, you know, I've been trying to get it down ever since. Now, I know that, uh, well, you've certainly got it down. I know you opened your first restaurant in Tuscaloosa. And now, did you say you have 12? We have 12. Uh, and, uh, uh, right one. now, and we're getting ready to open another one. Uh, Thirteen. Uh, Thirteen uh, later on this year. And what do you think that um, for our uh, viewers out there that are, you know, looking at um, maybe chasing their dream, maybe they've been laid off or things have changed for them, they say, you know, I've had this idea I want to pursue, or let's say maybe they're looking at getting the restaurant business. What's one piece of advice that you could 
give to them that you well the, the vision first of all know where you want to go you, yeah. you got to have some kind of an idea where you want to go and then uh, you got to figure out how to get there and uh, uh, I'm a student of the game uh, uh, whether it's playing the game of football or whether it's uh, uh, the restaurant business you've got to be able to go somewhere and get answers so it's going to take research it's going to take hard work and yeah. then preparation and uh, an old saying back in the day uh, from a football point of view is failure to prepare is preparation for failure. Yeah, that's a good point. And I know obviously probably having a great team around you too because the restaurant business we hear is always one of the toughest, but you certainly uh, mastered it. Um, and I wanted to ask too, Bob, that um, I know that uh, I've been to a couple of your restaurants and one thing I like right out of the gate is that I, I do love some good buffalo wings. But you have a very extensive menu, and it's just a great place. Obviously, if you want to go have a couple of drinks, you can go sit at the bar. Right. But I have a five-year-old, and it's very—it's just a real family atmosphere. You can go bring the whole family, watch the game. It's very comfortable. Right. We're, our, our restaurants are in a niche called casual dining. Yeah. And uh, uh, one of the things that we started uh, right from the get-go was making sure that we were family-friendly. Yeah. You know, kind of that McDonald's approach, you know. Yep. If the kids want to go there, mom and dad are going to follow. So we have a balanced approach like that. But And, uh, uh, you know, we do little things for the kids, like we'll have some Fruit Loops ready for them sure. when they first sit down and stuff. So uh, it's, it's one of those things that um, prepares you for the future. If you got the right. kids hooked, yeah, they're you're going to get them coming. when they're older, too. Yeah. <laughs> well, I know. And real quick, I wanted to touch, too, there's a pretty big event coming up uh, that's actually kind of world famous now, the, the Gumbo Cook-Off. Yeah. is coming up. Tell us briefly a little bit about well, what, the event coming yeah, up. Yeah, April 11th uh, at the mm -hmm. wharf uh, uh, up the road here, we're going to be doing something called the L.A. Gumbo Festival. L.A. Gumbo and Festival. And a good buddy of mine named Chef John Foles is going to come over, and the L.A. is going to be standing for Louisiana and Lower Alabama. And, you know, like we were talking earlier, there's a lot of shared history sure. uh, from here uh, all the way over to Louisiana especially when it comes to gumbo, and we're going to be uh, celebrating the dish of gumbo and have a cook-off. We're going to cook the largest pot of gumbo ever. Which uh, you did, uh, I we guess, did, a yeah. year and a half or so. It was Guinness yeah. was down here. Yeah, it was at the LSU-Alabama mm -hmm. game in Tuscaloosa, 3,710 pounds of gumbo. Wow. That's a lot of gumbo. And then we're going to have arts, craft, music, and, um, and then we're going to have a cook-off. We're going to have a Louisiana Alabama cook-off yes. and have some fun. And the real top chefs are coming here. It's a real yeah. serious uh, thing. Chef Fulce will be here. Rick Tremano from Chicago, who is a partner with Chef Fulce in Restaurant Revolution, uh, which uh, they just opened yeah. in New Orleans. And I know they have a, a PBS show. He's, uh, Chef Fulce has a PBS show mm -hmm. called uh, Taste of Louisiana. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, nobody knows uh, French Creole cuisine better wow. than Chef Fulce, which should be a lot of fun. And if somebody wanted to get more information? Gumboforlife.com. Uh, I believe that's, that that site is it's either up or it'll be up in a couple of days. Gumboforlife.com. Gumboforlife.com, or you can go to our website, Tuesdays with Dan, and when it's up, we'll post a link to it. And again, thank you so much for coming Thanks. by, Bob. Thanks Bob Baumhauer, everybody. I want to also thank Amy North for stopping by, also co host Margot Bush. Uh, that's our show. We're out of time, but uh, don't forget to get involved in your local community and be forgiving of others. Good night, everybody. Hi, I'm Dan Vega, and thank you for watching our channel. I want to take a second to tell you about a resource that's helping thousands of people across the country, Blue University. Blue University is the premier online business school for entrepreneurs and business leaders. You know, if you find yourself in a day-to-day -day grind where you've lost your joy or you're just tired of struggling, then check out blue.university. That's B-L-U dot university. I can promise that you receive nothing short of a multi-million dollar education. And if you want a completely different life in three to six months and a way to create wealth in five years or less, 
then again, check it out. That's blu.university. Find out why blue is the new color of success. Also, make sure to subscribe to this channel or to give us a good rating, but that's only if you see value. And when you do receive value, make sure to share it with someone else. Thank you very much, and we'll see you next time.